Hello everybody. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is tackle some classes. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to use some practical questions that I've written for my class um, as examples for things that we can do with classes. Um, in the practicals, I basically ask the, the students to create a person class with some constructors um, and the data and accessors and mutators. Um, and the data inside a person is a unique ID, a name, and a birthday. Um, so I'll go ahead and add a comment here that a person has an ID, a name, and a birthday. And I've also asked them to create a shape class. And um, shapes have a number of sides, a name, a perimeter, and an area. Um, this is this is good setup for working with hierarchies, where perhaps a person can become a student or an employee, and shapes can become things like triangles and squares and rectangles and things like that. Um, for now, though, uh, we haven't quite gotten to hierarchies, and we're first starting to see classes. And basically, classes are a great way to group data of different types together into one object, so that you can always manipulate that object as a whole. Now, this requires a lot of framework in order to build it. Um, but in the end, what you should be able to do is, is write things in main such that you talk about a person as an entire thing. Um, you know, integers are made up of, of 32 bits, and you don't talk about all those bits individually. They are collectively added together so that you can just handle them as a whole, as one entire piece. In that same way, we want to be able to talk about a person, like say, my dad, um, or whatever the person might be. We want to be able to talk about a person as an entity, as a whole, so that you don't have to talk about all the individual pieces of a person in order to move around and to use this object. And eventually, you never even want to think about the internal elements at all. All you want to know is, what kinds of things can my dad do? Um, in the same way that you only ever cared about, what kinds of things does an integer do? Now, as you progress in programming, you might eventually care about hey, how are negative numbers stored in integers and things like that. Um, but you don't actually need to know to do basic levels of programming. Um, and so this is the same idea. What we'd like to do is build this class so that we can talk about this person, my dad, and, and maybe do some cool things like um, figure out how old my dad is um, or, or, or figure out when his birthday is. You know, Maybe we'll have a get birth month function, something like this store in a variable so that we could eventually figure out how old he is um, and, and be able to operate on the class without having to worry about how the internal elements are stored. Um, now you can see I'm getting some red stuff from Visual Studios here. It's because we haven't written the person and I haven't done any pound includes or anything. Um, if you're curious about how to get to the practicals, uh, the link is here. Uh, I can make a link in the, the video stuff too so that you can get to that. Um, so go ahead, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is go ahead and do our pound includes. Um, it seems likely that we'll probably use strings in this particular thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pound include both IO string and string. Um, and then what I'd like to do is get started with building my class. Now in order to make a class, the first thing you do is you start with a class keyword. And that is followed by whatever you want to name the class. Now this, this name here is an identifier. It follows the rules of four identifiers, which means it starts with letters or underscore and continues with numbers and letters or underscore. Um, it has those same identifiers. You can call it whatever you want. Convention is to use uppercase for every new word. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now there are some classes we've been using all along. In fact, the string object that we've been using is actually a class. Um, and it's lowercase, uh, but that's because it's more of like something included by the system, I think. Um, and all of the C++ library stuff has all lowercase class names, even when they're classes. So vectors and, and stuff that you might learn in the future is all lowercase. And that, that seems to be OK and seems to be convention for C++. But usually when you're writing programmer-defined types, when you're writing programmer-defined classes, usually you start with a capital letter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. We've got a class person. Um, Data in a class should be private so that you can encapsulate and protect the data. It's a lot easier to make everything public, uh, but it kind of circumvents one of the major components of, of writing a class, which is to protect the data and to only operate with, with the functionality of the class and not have to worry so much about um, exactly how the data is stored. And so, so we're going to go ahead and, and stick with the proper convention of making all the data private. 
Um, there, there are definitely exceptions to this rule. Uh, persons have three things. They have an ID, which I imagine is an integer. They have a name, which I imagine is a string. And they have a birthday, which really has a couple of types in it. Uh, in my practicals, I say that the, the students can use a date class to help them. Um, we haven't written a date class, so I'm going to go ahead and add a month, day, and year here. Um, but if you have access to a date class, then you could certainly, whoops, I did that incorrectly, then you could certainly do something like date, birthday, or something like that here. And a class can have another class inside of it. That's perfectly fine. And in fact, that becomes more and more common as things go on. Um, this this creates the class. We can use this thing to access the, a, a person as an entire thing. Um, unfortunately, without accessors or mutators, we can't actually get access to these three particular elements. Um, and so we need to work on writing that functionality. <clears throat> but first, I would like to make sure that any person that's made like this um, is constructed with some default values for their ID, name, month, day, and year. Now, name is going to be an empty string because strings are created as empty strings. Um, which means they have no letters or characters associated with them. If you were to see out it, it would just output nothing because it's empty. Um, but we would like to initialize these things such that they make sense. And in order to do that, you need a constructor. Um, you can A constructor is a special function which just initializes the particular variables of a class. You can have a constructor with different numbers of arguments. Um, I'm going to write a zero parameter constructor for now. Constructors are functions that have no return type. They are creating the class. They don't return the class or anything like that. They are. They have the same name as the class name itself. And so in this case, it's a person. Uh, a zero parameter constructor would have nothing in here. But if you wanted to pass some parameters in here, um, you could do that, like something like this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you would call it. Maybe just I for the ID. And then you could do a string in or something like this. I'm going to do a zero parameter constructor for now. Um, and maybe I'll do a, a multi-parameter constructor for the shape object so that you can see the two. Inside this constructor, your job is to initialize the internal variables of the class. So I'm going to assign the ID to something. Maybe maybe negative 1 is like a default value. I'm going to assign the name to something. Um, I'm going to assign people who haven't been given a name or just called unknown. Or maybe you could write something like, hey, you. I'm going to give a default birthday here. I'm going to go ahead and set it to, I don't know, January 1st, 1900. Um, I do this all in one line, mostly uh, mostly because I could. But, but really, you should separate these out so that they're a little easier to read. Now, of course, if you had the birthday class, you'd be able to do something like birthday.set uh, month, day, year, um, assuming that you have a set that handles that. And so... Uh, I guess I guess you don't need month, day, year, year here. You need one, one, nineteen, ninety here, right? Um, and then and then that would clean this up a little bit and probably make it a little more obvious what's going on here. Hey, I missed the character. And so now we have a constructor. Now when this person, my dad, is created, he'll have a default birth month of one. He'll have a default ID of negative one, a default name of unknown. Um, you need to write accessors and mutators so that you can get access to these different things. Mutators change internal elements of the class. So a mutator is anything that is going to assign some value to ID, name, month, day, or year. Whereas an, an accessor just gives you access. Um, in the particular practical, I ask uh, the students to write a set ID and a get ID function as an accessor and mutator. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and start with that. I think I will also. Um, do a do a set birthday and a get birth month just so that we can see some of that. Um, so let's first start with the the set ID. So when someone calls set ID, what they're going to be trying to do is to tell the class what the valid ID should be, and so they're going to pass some value into this function that says, "Hey, I want to set the ID to this value i." Um, and so you should do some error checking on this. Um, so perhaps IDs have to be positive, which is why I initialize it to negative one up there. So as long as I is, is follows whatever rules you have for your IDs, then you can set the ID equal to I. And if it doesn't, you can make some other decision. Like maybe, um, maybe the decision you want to make is that 
uh, you, you output an error message, or maybe you just do nothing. In this case, I'm just going to do nothing. If they try to set the ID to something negative, I'm going to ignore it. Um, yeah, this is a mutator because it changes the value of ID, or it may change. The other thing you need to write is an accessor. Um, and the accessor, the idea is that it's supposed to give you access to these internal elements of the class. So in this case, the accessor would be called get ID, and all it has to do is return ID. That's it. That's all it has to do. So it just gives you access. And so now, if I want to set the ID of my dad uh, so he can be the first person, sure, then I call this. And then if I want to figure out what my dad's ID is, then I can call get ID. I could even assign it to variable or something like that if I wanted to. Um, you should do some sort of accessory mutator to every element of your class. Uh, if you can't get to a particular element of your class, there must be a reason for it. It could be um, it could be a value that's stuck in there for a reason that gets set by other things that happen related to the functionality of your class. For example, in the string class, there is a size variable, and every time you kind of add new characters to the string, that size variable goes up. Um, and, and it isn't like you have to explicitly set the size of the string. Although there probably is a mutator if you dig into the documentation for that. Okay, the other two things I promised that I would get to you is to do a set for the month, day, and year. I'm going to call it M, D, and Y. Um, there are a bunch of checks we need to make here. And so M has to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 12. And then I will set month equal to M. And then day has to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 31. Now, I know not every month has 31 days. Um, and so this check is not sufficient. It's not complete. Um, and then I'll allow the year to be set to whatever. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go with this because it makes it a little bit shorter. And, and you know the videos run long anyway. So this is a good set. So now I can do things like um, call my dad set birthday. And then set whatever his birthday is. So I don't I don't know if I want to out my dad. So I'll make something up. Uh, let's see, November thirtieth, nineteen twenty. Okay, so my dad's not actually that old. And I called this set, but I really meant to call it set birthday. Okay. Um, so now the only thing left that doesn't work is this get birth month. And that's because I would need to write um, accessors for such things. And all that's going to do is return the month of the birthday. Um, again, I could avoid probably writing some of this if I had the date object, um, but, but I don't. So if I go ahead and build and compile this, one failed. OK, yay. It says set birthday must return a value. Um, let's go ahead and look at that. accidentally added a breakpoint. So my set birthday should be a void function. Um, I made it an int function like it was going to return something. Yeah. Okay, so it run. Let me go ahead and see if you can see this. No, see, it's not popping up in this particular one. It says my dad's ID is 1, and then it just says 11, um, which matches, matches our main here. It says my dad's ID is 1, because we set it to 1. And then my dad get birth month is 11. Um, using these two examples is, is not uh, very exciting. Um, it's really, really helpful to have um, actual projects that do something. So I recommend going off and, and you know writing a tic-tac-toe game that, that utilizes classes or something like that. Um, the other piece, I know this video is getting a little long, but the other piece that I promised to do is to write our shape class. Um, shapes have lots of pieces. They have a number of sides, they have a name, they have a perimeter, and they have an area. And this should all be private. It turns out that they actually are private by default in classes because that's the way you should do things. Um, I ask for a constructor, and I'm going to go ahead and make a multi-parameter constructor here where you can pass in the number of sides, the name, the perimeter, and the area. And then I will, 
I will set all of those. So number of size equals ns, um, name equals n, perimeter equals p, area equals a. Um, so that when somebody creates a shape, they they have to they have to pass all of these things. So I want a shape with zero sides. I want to call it a circle. I'm going to give it a perimeter of 3.14, uh, and I'll give it an area of 3.14, which which is not it's not really a valid circle here. Um, maybe. Maybe, maybe I'll change this to 6.28 so that it becomes a valid circle. Um, anyway, so that, that will initialize my shape to have zero sides, be called a circle, um, and, and, and has that perimeter and area. But you could also do a shape with four sides. You could call it a square. Um, you could say that its perimeter is four while its area is one. And, and you can make as many of these as you want. Um, which is kind of cool. The it's often normal to have both a zero parameter and a multi-parameter constructor, so that you can create your object in different ways. It really just depends on what your needs are. But I would not be able to create a shape. Um, oh, I have the same name. I would not be able to create a shape that does not have um, that does not have a, a, these four parameter constructors because I didn't write a zero parameter constructor. So this this doesn't work doesn't work without a zero parameter constructor here. Zero parameter constructor. Okay. Um, the the other pieces in here are that uh, I've asked folks to write output functions for these things um, and to give both an accessors and mutators to allow them to change different things. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll write an output function for the square and, and, and allow people to fill in the rest of these so that the video doesn't get crazy long. So the output function is, is an accessor. Um, usually the idea is that you say something like, you, you, make, you make a little story out of this. So A, your shape, let's see, the shape is a name, name, period, it has number of sides, number of sides, put an indel in here, um, its area is area, and, and its perimeter is perimeter. Okay. Um, Obviously, once you construct these, because I haven't written any mutators, I can't change any of the shapes stuff. Uh, it would be really nice to have the area and perimeter be calculated automatically. Um, that is that is not going to happen in this particular case. Um, I didn't call any of these outputs, so they don't show up, but I can. They don't show up in my console window, but I can. Um, writing the class is just, it just is describing functionality that you might want to use. Oh darn, it's not popping up. It never pops up on this machine for some reason. Anyway, it definitely says the shape is a circle. It has zero number of sides. Its area is 3.14 and its perimeter is 6.28. The shape is a square. It has four numbers of sides. Its area is one. Its perimeter is four. Um, which is because that's what we told it. Anyway, hopefully you get an idea of how you can aggregate this data together. Um, I get that, that working with classes is a little bit confusing. Um, try to make some. Try to make some to do a tic-tac-toe board or the hangman game or anything that you're particularly interested in. You can't learn to do this stuff without playing around with it and doing it. So tackle it. Play around with it and do it. Um, the video got a little long. It's 21 minutes. But I hope you got a lot out of it and, and you can solve the rest of the practical stuff with this. Um, that's it for me for today. Goodbye!